Arthritis this morning in my hands and allergies in my eyes make for it to be a crummy day to play the piano. Um, so please excuse mistakes, they just are going to happen this morning. It is so good to be with you today because in our journey together in Christ, we need to understand that through our baptisms and through the sacrament of Holy Community, communion, the Christ of God is living in, with, and around us. That we do not take this journey alone, that when we are faced with trials and tribulations, Christ is there with us to help us see our way through those things, and in our triumphs and joys, Christ is also there with us. He brings to us a sense of abiding hope. Hope is a tough thing to hang on to in a very difficult world today. It's why I chose to wear my rainbow uh, stole today. Because we all know a lot about rainbows in the desert. We know that a rainbow is the sign of what? It's a sign of God's promise. It's also a sign that that darn storm that just took the shingles off my roof is done because there's sun shining through from some other direction opposite the rain where we get a refraction of those raindrops and end up with a rainbow. So we are brought hope, not only by the rainbow of, of God, which is a promise to never destroy the earth again by flood, but I have to say, I think the people in Delaware, Washington, Pennsylvania, um, Vermont are all wondering about that right now. They have all of our water this year. Can we send them our heat? And actually, a lot of our heat's in the upper part of California and the Northwest right now, too. You know, when we're faced with difficult situations in our lives, it's important for us to understand that Christ resides in us. Imagine the people today in Northern California in Reading. If you've been watching anything on the news, there is this massive, out-of-control wildfire burning through the city of Reading right now. And people are losing their lives because they're not leaving quickly enough to escape those coming flames. Imagine those people, if they had no sense of hope for the future, how desolate they would feel, how desolate their community would become if there were no hope. That would be us in the church. You know, Paul says that for this life only we have believed in Jesus Christ. In other words, Christ isn't real. Then we are most to be pitied because we have believed in something that is not true. But Paul knew that, that Christ was real and alive and true. Even though he only met him in the midst of being struck by lightning, and being talked to by Christ, he knew the reality of Christ's presence. And in all the places he went, with all the problems Paul had, now some of those were personal problems for Paul, I think. Others were issues in communities where he came to teach the good news of Jesus Christ. And he tells us he wasn't much of a teacher. I kind of have to wonder if that wasn't false humility on his part. He was a Pharisee um, by vocation in, in the Jewish faith, and that meant that he had to always be ready to speak. But of course the difference is he was always ready to speak about the law and adherence to the law, and not always ready to speak about God's grace in life. That was a little bit tougher thing for Paul to do, because that hadn't been his primary life's experience. So in our lives, being reminded of this journey we're all taking, whether we're starting out at age three or four or five right now, or whether we're in our 90s, the promise of God through our baptism and through Holy Communion is that Christ is with us to bring us hope, to give us the gifts of life, salvation, and forgiveness from God. I don't have to be perfect. In fact, I can't be perfect. No matter how hard I try, I'm going to fall short. I'm never going to quite make it on my own. In fact, I wouldn't even use the word quite. I think I have to say I'm never going to make it on my own. Because I know the kinds of things that I think and how quick I respond sometimes with being cranky. It's who we are. You know, those really grace-filled people that we really want to be around all the time 
And we can name a few in this congregation who are now past saints, who have joined God in triumph in his heavenly kingdom. They were very special, unique, and wonderful people. They really were. They came much closer to fulfilling God's hope for their lives than I ever will, or than most of us ever will. So it's important for us to be able to acknowledge that in this journey, which is a lifelong journey, none of us arrived when you got through confirmation, you're just getting started. My boys are going, oh, you're kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lifelong journey in the church, not just, I learned the things I needed to learn and now I'm done. No, you just learned the things a child needs to know in confirmation. And now you need to move in your life understanding the hope that lives in you through Jesus Christ. So rainbows. God's presence and promise for his creation. But rainbows are also a sign of hope. Hope for you and me. Hope in Jesus Christ. In our Via de Cristo community, rainbows are a big sign. They're a symbol of the presence of God's love in the world. By the way, we have a weekend coming up. If you look at your newsletter, if you get it in an email, take time. It's the middle of October, and yours truly is the only spiritual director that weekend. Not sure how that's going to go, but... I think God will give me courage and strength and my wife a lot of patience. Because um, it means being gone a lot from home uh, to get ready for this event. So if this is something you might be interested in, please contact me. I will get you paperwork to sign up and we will get it turned in. Um, and it's the 14th through the 16th. I think it's a Thursday evening through a Sunday afternoon uh, in the middle of the month of October. And I had a, a few people express interest last year in going, and I would be more than pleased to offer any of you an opportunity to come and be a part of that. And it is a co-ed weekend. Now, what does that mean? It's not like a co-ed dorm in college, okay? Yeah, I see a few of your younger people snickering and going, really? Yeah, I remember those days. Um, I think... I think I was in the very beginning of that kind of thing in, in the late 60s at church, or at, at uh, our undergraduate school. Um, it means that men and women will hear the, the talks and, and share worship most of the time, but then they will divide into their own groups to have conversation about what they've heard and what they've learned. So. It's, it's kind of a difficult situation because we're trying not to put people in a place where they feel uncomfortable because they've got a husband or a partner with them that they may not want to say everything to. Um, so this is an opportunity to hear everything of the program and then go into separate spaces for other conversations and presentations. So please keep that in mind. And by the way, if you're kind of struggling in life right now, Via de Cristo is a great place to go to have your hope renewed. All you have to do is talk to people who have been through it. They will tell you that this is a great place. It's an opportunity to go and be taken care of for four days. I mean that literally, you will be taken care of. You don't have to cook, you don't have to clean, you don't have to do anything except be there. And it's really a wonderful opportunity to be together. And really, the whole thing is about lifting up the hope that is in us in Jesus Christ. So next time you see a rainbow, remember this isn't just for God's earthly creation. It is a part of Christ's passion for who we are. And the power of his love to transform us in our living and in our journey of faith through all of our lives. In Christ's name, amen.